First, we start with our top story. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Jake Auchincloss. He was the first member of Congress to call for Marjorie Taylor Greene to resign or be expelled. We also have former Congressman Denver Riggleman. He's the chief strategist for the Network Contagion Research Institute. Great to have both of you here. Congressman Auchincloss, I want to start with you um, because you, as we said, were the first to really um, sound the alarm about Marjorie Taylor Greene, you believe she should be expelled. Uh, isn't the argument against that that that's for the voters to decide? They're the ones who put her there. If you don't understand that calling for violence against your political opponents is unacceptable in a democracy, then you should not be representing one. Marjorie Taylor Greene fails that test. But I should not have been the first person to call for her expulsion. Leader McCarthy should have beaten me to the punch instead of traveling to Palm Beach to kiss Donald Trump's ring. Uh, Congressman Auchincloss, let me just follow up on that for a second, because the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said that the enemy is from within. That is what she now says. Um, look, you're a Marine. Do you fear for your safety? Do you think that Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to do you harm? I don't fear for my safety, and I do think it's important that we turn the temperature down in the House chambers so that we can have vigorous debate as we're meant to do. The truth remains, though, that Marjorie Taylor Greene has called for the executions of Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and she wants to bring a gun onto the House floor. Uh, so, again, it really shouldn't have to be Speaker Pelosi who calls this out. The Republican conference should be taking care of extremism with its own ranks. They should have the decency to be embarrassed and then to take action on it, as opposed to continuing to buy into this cult of Trump. Congressman Rugelman, they had their chance. They had their chance and they continue to have their chance to try to stop people like Marjorie Taylor Greene from leading, from talking, from being able to chase a Parkland school shooting survivor down the street, heckling him. According to her opponent, OK, so she was in this runoff race, as you know, in Georgia, 14th District um, in August. Her opponent said that there is a mound of oppo research on her. It's not just the stuff that we can see publicly on her social media posts that she's now scrubbed. There's a mound of it. And so much so that Liz Cheney and Steve Scalise back then went to Kevin McCarthy and were like, we have a problem on our hands. They knew that she was going to be a problem. And somebody who is this fundamentally poisonous, who would heckle a teenage school shooting victim, that's not going away. But Kevin McCarthy hasn't done anything as far as we can tell. You know, her, her opponent was a neurosurgeon also. So I, I, I want to put that out there about John. And, you know, we have talked about this and I find it amazing. And what scares me a lot in, in listening to the congressman, he's exactly right. It should have been the Republican conference that first jumped up and said this stuff is completely unacceptable. My guess is she won't be expelled because it takes two thirds of the vote. But what really concerns me is she had an audience for those videos. We talk about the oppo research. People wanted to watch this. She thought that people would be interested in the things that were, she was saying. And when you talk about liking posts, the calls for the killing of members of Congress or thinking that space lasers are starting, you know, forest fires, you have an issue. And you have to start wondering, you know, people keep calling her a firebrand. I don't know if firebrand is a synonym for unstable, but that's the issue that we have right now is we have somebody who is, from what she said, the videos that she's put out there that we can define as unstable. And that's why I think there's that concern. And I, and I know why Nancy Pelosi was pretty surly in the press conference when people who do want to bring guns on the floor have been saying things that are so outlandish and so ridiculous, based in conspiracy theories that were used to seize the Capitol, there's certainly a cascading effect here. And I think that's the problem that we have is not only do we have Marjorie Taylor Greene putting out this type of tribe, we have people watching this. And that's the issue with disinformation. That's exactly right. Look, you say space, it's not just space lasers, Congressman Riggleman, it's Jewish space lasers. I mean, she says the Ro in this post reportedly, she blames the Rothschilds for funding the building of Jewish space lasers. The Rothschilds, the, the European banking family, it's the oldest, laziest anti-Semitic trope out there, right? But the, but the point is, is it's not a mystery. I mean, none of this is a mystery. She is who she has always been. It's the problem is the people electing her. The problem is the people allowing her to spread this at this point. She's who she always is. Um, I mean, am I wrong? Sean and Allison, she was seated on a committee. Education. I, I, education. education. How can she I, be uh, doing anything with children? I, nothing. And, you know, and that's the thing that gets me. You know, we look at Steve King. You know, I was there. 
you know, and he was expelled from the committees. And and what she's done is so much worse. You talk about the Rothschilds, uh, John. You know, Rothschilds is also the baseline for QAnon theory for adrenochrome and harvesting babies. Yeah. Same exact thing, you know, Jewish blood libel. And, you know, and that's the things that, that we're looking at right now is that you're exactly right. People knew what they were getting. They knew the package this was wrapped in, and she's still seated on committees. I don't think she's going to be expelled. I, I commend the congressman for doing this, for going forward and trying to do this. It, it's, it's a noble thing to do, but it's not going to happen with the two-thirds votes in the House. And that's, that's what we have right now. And, and I think that that's what bothers me about disinformation. But what bothers me is how many people have bought into this nonsense. Yeah. Congressman, can Democrats do anything without the support of Republicans? Democrats want to work in a bipartisan fashion, both to govern and to remove the worst elements from Congress. But the GOP has ownership of this. And the GOP knew what it was getting well before Marjorie Taylor Greene when it embraced Donald Trump in 2016. And that is really when the ticking time bomb, t ticking time bomb began. And many GOP leaders, including Representative Riggleman, who voted against impeachment of Donald Trump, own this issue. And they all need to take ownership of uh, removing this faction of, of white supremacism and extremism. We need to have a GOP that can rebuild itself on foundations of integrity. Go ahead, Congressman. Yeah, I, um, you know, I wasn't there uh, to vote for impeachment or non-impeachment, you know, and I would have voted for impeachment, as everybody knows, uh, you know, based on my background and, and talking about QAnon, as you know, for months. And, and that was the issue that I had, is that there has to be some bravery there. And you saw 10 people who showed incredibly incredible bravery and especially with Liz Cheney, what she's going through, you know, down in Wyoming right now, when you're looking at Fred up and up in Michigan, Anthony Gonzalez in Ohio, Tom Rice. I mean, all these individuals, you know, stood up and said that we had to get rid of sort of this scourge of disinformation. And there is culpability when you see a siege on the Capitol on January 6th. And when you have Marjorie Taylor Greene still spouting this nonsense, there has to come a time for accountability. And, and sadly, from what I'm seeing on the ground out here, John and Allison, I'm not seeing that accountability that's going to that's actually going to, you know, jump up and bite anybody. I think they're going to actually make gains in 2022 based on stop the steal messaging. That's what I think is going to happen. Congressman Ockin Colossus, uh, uh, there's another development which has to do with security around the U.S. Capitol, which is the Capitol Police are now suggesting putting a fence, keeping the fence up around the U.S. Capitol. How do you feel about fencing in the U.S. Capitol? We shouldn't turn the home of our democracy into a fortress. We don't want the Capitol to become a green zone that is unwelcoming, indeed even hostile to constituents and journalists. This should be uh, open, safely open to the public, and representatives should govern with transparency and accountability. I'm deeply concerned about a permanent security posture around the Capitol that can keep people away. They deserve, taxpayers and voters deserve, to come be able to ask questions and to access the Capitol.